We're back with the third quarter of shots from the bench here at Marguerite Republic in the beautiful Spanish Spring section of the villages. Marguerite Republic, where the Food Fellowship and Fun are always seated first. Uh, while we were at uh, halftime, uh, the, the gang around the bar had got the answers to both of our trivia questions. It was, in fact, the Cincinnati Reds was the football team in 1934. And the uh, one player, the uh, Hall of Famer, that played on uh, three teams, uh, in three, the same team in three different cities, when it's none, other, none other than Eddie Matthews, the fantastic third baseman for the Braves. And we'll be doing a little bit more trivia, but uh, my partner, who is always on top of the NBA, is going to bring us up to speed with just what's going on uh, with hoops. And what, how was the, how's the, the past week in hoops for you, Bob? What do you got? Well, uh, before we get into the, uh, how, the, how some of the teams are doing, uh, okay. big story in the NBA this just yesterday. Yeah, I just saw it. Yeah. Uh, the retirement of uh, Kobe Bryant. You know, uh, I think this is 20th season. 20th is that, season and, and that was straight. Did he come strictly out of yeah. high school? I mean, yeah. yes. Yeah, he yep. played new college. Yep. Yeah. And um, so he'll retire at the end of the season. Uh, uh, according to the way his skills have been going, it looks like he's making the right decision. Oh, is that right? I haven't been watching. Uh, absolutely. But yeah. The, well, team, the, know, teams, the team's prone. having problems. You know, when you get older, oh, injury heck. prone. Not the same player. It takes so long to Wait a recover. minute. You know when you get older. What are you, what are you trying to you trying to say that I'm old? Is that what you're saying, bud? No, I'm just teasing well, you. But I, I, know I know exactly what it's like what for saying. me anyway. <laughs> but, uh, you know, what a great career he's had. 17-time uh, oh. All-Star. Um, the second most behind Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as far as All-Star appearances. And um, he's won five NBA titles. Okay. He was the uh, third le leading scorer in NBA history. Third leading scorer. That's not bad. Um, he was a 12-time. <laughs> some people say, well, he just scored. Well, no. He was a 12-time all-defensive player in the NBA. He was an excellent defensive player. It brought, brought a real uh, hard-nosed uh, fervor to his play, that's for sure. Um, he uh, once scored 81 points in a game. That was in 2006 against the Toronto Raptors. Uh, listen to this. In that game, they were losing by 18 points early in the third quarter. And he came out, they called a timeout, and he was, he was livid. He was mad as can be. And do you know, from, the third, from a little bit into the third quarter on, he scored 51 points <laughs> in that game. Only he one made a statement. Sounds like he made a statement. That's right. Only <laughs> one player in NBA history ever did anything like that, and that was uh, Chamberlain, yeah. Wilt Chamberlain, uh, in uh, 1962. And he was a little bigger than everybody else. <laughs> he scored 59 <laughs> in the second half. Yeah. He's the only other player. And even Michael Jordan didn't score 51 in, the, in one half. Okay. So uh, that's that's an amazing career that he's had. Um, well, what I and I mean it, yeah, but my opinion opinion of Kobe Bryant, I watched yeah. a lot. Of, what I respected most about him when the game was on the line. He always wanted the ball. A lot right. of guys said, well, he's selfish. And he's, no, guys like he and Jordan and and, uh, yeah. and uh, the guy from Cleveland, Le LeBron, I'm sorry, the top of that. I mean, these guys are all, they're e excellent passers. They handle the ball great, but yeah. they want the ball with the game on the line. Sure. They're, not, they're not hogging it. They just know that they can do the job. Sure. I always like to watch Kobe because I knew they could have three guys on him and he'd find a way to get off a yeah. good shot. Well, he won five NBA titles. Yeah. Um, that's that's a major. And I uh, think he, you know if uh, you know when he when he had Shaq there, they won won a couple of titles. Uh, they didn't get along. Uh, a lot of people think that's because he wanted to be the man. He didn't want to share his the limelight with with someone else because he uh, that's what that's what they say. I don't yeah. know. I don't that's, know. Him. Sounds like but a press. Yeah, a, a press, that's, that's uh, the knock on him, you know. And uh, they yeah. think that he could have had at least a couple more. Yeah, uh, with Shaq, if he wow. didn't, uh, you know, if they would have gotten along. Yeah. Shaq goes to Miami, and wins a championship down there, and so, uh, you know, so I think that's probably what could have happened if they stayed together. But overall, what a, what a career! Um, you know, he's the six world, he's a, the world six rated uh, richest player <laughs> of any sport. Well, that's not bad. Uh, yeah, net worth so is he's <laughs> don't worry about Kobe. He's yeah, not going to worry about him. You won't see him on the street. No. <laughs> no, he won't be panhandling. And um, but he's uh, 260 million dollars a year. He's a current, uh, and he, he makes 23. He's the highest paid player in the NBA, even though his skills are diminished. 23.5 a year. He makes another 31 million in endorsements. 
you know, every year. So uh, he's fine. He's set for life. But, um, you know, he had a great career. Uh, the, you know, like I said, a lot, of, a lot of people aren't losing any sleep over him lo- leaving, though, because, the, you know, they just don't well, like prob- him as a person. He probably sta- and he probably stayed maybe one half year longer than he should have. <laughs> but you know what? He deserves to have his farewell tour. And I think probably somebody came up to him and said, Kobe, the way it is, you're probably yeah. not going to be playing past you know, this year. So you may yeah. want to wrap it up and say mm-hmm. goodbye to everybody one more time around the block. Players that have played with him have said he is aloof. He's arrogant. He's not a, not a doesn't hang out with the team. He stays off by himself. Uh, you know, these are, you know you can't go. You got to go by what people say that played with him. But uh, you know you can't go. You can't argue the fact of the type of player he was. Type of person. Well, that's that's uh, up to someone's opinion. I, I like I said, I never paid much attention. But right. as a, as a competitive player, right. all I know is when they when he was in his prime, when he wanted the ball. Right. You better watch out because he could light it up about as fast as anybody could light it like up. Like when, when Michael Jordan retired, he was he was the he guy. He was beloved. Yeah, everybody loved Michael Jordan. Right. You know. Yeah. They even had a movie. Because he know. won. Yeah, he was a winner. You yeah. Know, he he was uh you know just well loved, but Kobe uh, hasn't been quite like that. So, uh, but anyway, hats off to his career. Absolutely. Uh, ter- certainly deserved. And he was and he was the another thing that he was was a bridge between. Between Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Yes, he was. You know, yeah, he was that bridge. He that was the guy. Kept the NBA that, going. That was a long bridge too. I mean, that was right. a five, seven, I mean, ten if, year bridge. If we I hadn't mean. had Kobe, who would have been that guy to carry that torch right after Jordan left? I'll you know? tell you what. And I, now we got LeBron, and then maybe Steph Curry is the next guy. Who knows? That's right. Well, I, I think he, like I said, he was yeah. the face of the league. No question. After after Jordan left, he was the guy. Yeah. So. So I just want to mention that. And All of course, right. like what's going on the, uh, right now, uh, biggest story is the Warriors still 18 and 0. Uh, and haven't shown any signs of losing. That's amazing. Uh, do you um, know how hard it is <clears throat> to go out and win 18 bats right. professional against professional teams uh-huh. on the road? I mean, I'm sure they've been on the road probably eight times at least, and that's to right. go and just beat team that's just amazing. And then on the other side of the coin, the 76ers, uh, they've lost every game they played, and there's and they're starting to. Uh, fall apart with dissension on the <laughs> team and everything. Uh, you know, poor, poor uh, Emeka Okafor, uh, not Emeka Okafor, um, Je- what's his name? Je- Jaheel Okafor. Yeah, I, you got me. Yeah, the, the, I didn't mean to say when, they're, when, when you're all in 20, I don't, nobody knows your yeah, first name. Right. <laughs> but uh, no, he's had, a, he's had a pretty good season, although uh, he's starting to be affected by it himself because he got a fight. Did you see that? Number one. Uh, yes. Number yeah, one I saw, I saw that. Yeah. Number two pick in the draft. Yeah, got a fight, I saw, I saw uh, that. At a... Uh, some fan was heckling him and starting to get into a fight. Well, uh, you know, boys will be boys, I guess. But, I guess, but that's, you know. yeah. So, the, the, you know, Cavs, the uh, Warriors are still, you know, uh, number one in the West. The Spurs are, are right there and behind them, the Thunder. And then the Eastern Conference, you got the Cavs at 13-4. and four. They had a players-only meeting, you know, in uh, Cleveland when the uh, uh, Cavs lost the game the other day. Uh, players only. I mean, they're thirteen and four. They're not having oh, a bad that's, game. Oh, that's too bad. They're but they got to keep up with uh, with the Warriors. So LeBron James had a had a uh, player only meeting and to shake up the team. Uh, try player to get only. Them play, uh-huh. Get their learn their roles a little better. <laughs> but the the team I'm, I think it's impressive is the Pacers at number two in the West. They weren't even in the. Uh, I was going to say, where did they come from? Too. I'm I mean, sorry, I, in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, uh, they've won like five, six in a row, I think. Yeah. And yeah, they're. Yeah, and they were. They of course they got Paul George back. Well, he was high before level. he got hurt. He was uh, he was yep. the rising star in the league. No and question. And CJ Miles, their two guard, is is playing phenomenal basketball right now, and their defense is playing well. So that and the Heat, that, the Heat also uh, they play. I think they play probably the best half court defense in the NBA. The the Heat with. Uh, uh, Whiteside, the uh, center. I mean, like I saw him in a game against the Knicks. Every time they drove down the, they literally every time they drove down the lane, he blocked. He the rejected shot. it. Yeah, right. I, I heard he was absolutely right. a gifted defensive player. So you got Wade, who that. seems not hurt right now, and uh, Bosch playing well. Uh, that's that's a team, really good team right now. So that's a little bit about the NBA that I want to go over with you. 
Uh, it's still very early, but that's a couple of the stories that I, I, like had, it. That I had. I like that. I'll tell you what. Uh, that's, uh, thank you very much because, like I said, uh, thanks to Bob for following the NBA as close as he does. He knows what he's talking about. I certainly don't, but I, I know the players, but I can't give you any updates on them. But I'll tell you what. Uh, before we come back for the uh, fourth quarter, I want to throw a couple trivia questions out again to the bars. Let's see if you guys know anything about futility in the National Football League. Here's my question to you. What quarterback in NFL history set a record for being sacked the most three consecutive years? Uh, that's one that I want you to think of. That had a hurt. And uh, yeah, how about that? That's a tough one. And uh, also, I want to talk about some of the futility teams of all times. Let's talk first about a little bit about the uh, Tampa Bay team that went 0 and 14 after going 0 and 12 to finish up the year before. The quarterback of that team. I want to know who the quarterback was, and I also want to know what their longest play from scrimmage was for the whole year. That's absolutely amazing to me. But uh, so I want the quarterback of the '76 Tampa Bay Bucks. And uh, we all know McKay, but this, uh, so, so the jokes, the jokes will be flying. But uh, so keep that in mind. There were the quarterback of the Bucks in 76, who is, uh, my little hint is he's probably kind of an icon down here around Florida as a quarterback. But uh, for, the, uh, for the 76 team, uh, they had, uh, you won't believe, their longest play from scrimmage in a 14-game season. So you keep that in mind. And we'll also talk about the second worst team in history, which is the New England Patriots in 1991. But uh, those are the, uh, we, we've thrown out a couple to you, and we want you to think about those. And we'll be back with some rants I've got about uh, things that are really bothering me in some of the pro sports. And we'll be back to get the answers and give you some more rants in the fourth quarter right after this. Okay, we're into the fourth quarter here of shots from the bench, and we're going to get right to the trivia questions. But uh, first, uh, we've got guys yelling out the wrong answers to all my trivia questions, so we'll get back in touch with that. But uh, something I want everybody to think of that my partner brought up, we'll get to these trivia questions. But uh, after the trivia questions, before we go off the air, I want everybody to think about what uh, they have to be thankful for. Uh, in during, sports. In sports in these uh, last... What are you thankful for What are you really thankful for in sports? But we're going to do that at the end. We I want to get back to yeah. why nobody can know the... Uh, the uh, coach of South Carolina, they, nobody knows that he was the uh, quarterback for Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 1976. Spurrier. Nobody remembers Steve Spurrier. What uh, I really like about the uh, lousy team that Tampa Bay had was their longest play from scrimmage. From scrimmage. A whole year was 38 yards. Wow. Can you imagine watching, going, going to watch a team that had a 30, 38 yards as their longest play from scrimmage well, for a whole season? Team, correct, yeah. uh, no, no, they weren't. That was that was their third, I think, third year in operation. Maybe their well, fourth. Well, yeah, I mean, but were, oh, yeah, but they were still, yeah, but uh, no, first so that was pretty yeah. weak. But uh, let's talk about the one in 15. Uh, there was a team that was one in 15 that I genuinely consider to be the second worst team in the history of football, and that would be after the Tampa Bay Bucks in 1976. This was a team that was 1-15 in 1991. They, won their first, they lost their first game 27-24, and that was the most points they scored in a game all year long. They won one game by two points over a team that was actually had a winning record, but they were 1-15. Who can tell me the 1-15 from uh, 1991? Anybody got any ideas or thoughts? Because we'll go, we'll go to my next, uh, we're going right back to my, to me, the next worst team in the history of football. I want to know the quarterback who broke his own record. Uh, he set one and then he broke it two more times after that, but being sacked the most. And there was a, a piece of equipment that was designed specifically for him and he was the first quarterback to ever wear this piece of equipment. So think if you can tell me who had, what was the piece of equipment that was designed for him? And uh, you got to think back, this is, uh, I'll tell you what, is head coach had the first name of Whale. Now, they didn't call him Whale, he had a nickname, but his first name was O-A-I-L. And if you, and his son, uh, is still a coach in the uh, National Football League, his last son's name is Wade. Mm -hmm. 
and he was an NFL coach. So see if you can come up with uh, Bum Phillips. That was Whale Phillips. O A I L Phillips. Now you're getting somewhere. We're get to the we're getting to the trivia. So let's hear about the quarterback that set his own record from 1971, 72, and in 1973, where he got he broke his own record again for being sacked the most in the history of the National Football League. Who remembers that quarterback? And he ended up quarterbacking that team 10 years later in a playoff game. That is exactly the name of the team. I want to know the name of the quarterback. I like that. Everybody's jumping out. I'll tell you what. Uh, while we're talking about that team, who can? And there was another breakthrough player on that team. Uh, bec because no, now you're going way back. But how about the guy? who uh, started something that still holds true today and nobody else ever did. Billy White Shoes Johnson, he would go and celebrate. You watch his celebrations and now see what they've uh, morphed into, which is absolutely incredible. All he used to do is, oh my gosh, we're not getting anywhere with these questions. Tell you what, I'm gonna have to give it to you. We're gonna have to give it to you, but I wanna tell you a couple more uh, stats that you'll be impressed about that Houston Oilers team. They uh, gave up 447 points and scored 198. So they actually had a differential of uh, 248 points. Uh, you're not getting the quarterback. I want the quarterback. I've got a partner. You're a football. Do you have a football? Uh, you're too young. You don't know the. Don't know. Greg, come, Greg, come on. Jump in here. I want some help for these guys. Nobody knows the quarterback. Well, he was none other good from the 60s, than huh? Dante Pastorini. Dan Pastorini, he was a first-round pick. He came out. Every time he'd go back to pass, he'd get killed. Uh -huh. And they put together a flak jacket. And he, they said, isn't this protecting you? He said, yeah, it's protecting me. But now I can't raise my arm over my head to throw the ball farther than five yards. But Dante Pastorini, actually, when Houston got decent and began winning games in the late 70s and early 80s, was still their quarterback. Yep. So Dante Pastorini was the guy. And here's a, by the way, here's another quarterback. You know, you talk about some quarterbacks that played on some teams that really, really were awful. And they, uh, there was a quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers back in the 70s who I think has made it into the Hall of Fame. And for 15 years, he was awful. Anybody remember the San Francisco 49 quarterback from the uh, early, late 60s, early 70s, played for 12, 13 years and was awful. And then they started to get good, and he, he made the playoffs five years in a row. Now he's in the Hall of Fame, and he was an announcer. No, this is the 40, 49ers. John Brody. John Brody, my partner knows. <laughs> Look at that, my partner who's much younger than me. Rem <laughs> What's that? Well, he's yeah, he's. I guess he was a scratch golfer, huh? Because he played he played on the senior tour. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I hope you got him to sign it. <laughs> All right, now it's time for me to do some uh, ranting and raving about things that really bother me about sports. And I'll tell you what, as I watch in the big highlights being shown in the big screen, whatever happened to the ability to tackle? What, some of these guys think that the idea is to see if you can hit the guy with your shoulder pads while he's running and see if you can knock him down so you can taunt him and dance over him. Whatever happened to using your arms, uh, tackling a guy around the, the waist and the legs, but nobody does it anymore, so they keep showing these guys breaking 15 tackles, and nobody, these are professional guys making zillions of dollars, and they don't even try to tackle. It just absolutely, absolutely gripes me. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, partner. You watch a lot of football. Maybe it doesn't uh, get you like it gets me, but I, well, I cannot stand. Yeah, I'm sure there's, uh, there's some uh, basic skills that are lacking. And like we talked about, they draft uh, certain players for coverage skills yeah. and some for tackling skills and whatever. But you know what? You know, some of these players are just so big and strong. Uh, you know, try, to, try to arm tackle uh, – uh, Adrian Peterson coming through the well, line. Well, that's my whole what, point. Yeah. you so got to use your body you got, and you your got, arms. You've got to use everything right. to gap tackle these right. guys. They're going to bounce right off you. And, and you're going to bounce anyway. Yeah, <laughs> oh, know. that's right. Someone like that. But doesn't you need make help. But you're going to you got to neutralize yeah. the impact. 
that's what I mean. I played I, I played very, very small school mm-hmm. stuff, but boy, if you just stand there and let somebody run over, you're going to get killed. you got to neutralize the impact when you go to tackle somebody, and I don't see anybody doing it. They stand there and they try to throw their shoulder yeah. into guys, and then they end up bouncing backwards <laughs> or sideways. So Sir, that, we mentioned – you know, players running alongside a uh, offensive player and not tackling them, and, you know, and waiting for the a better opportunity, and they have no opportunity after that. Yeah. That's another thing that we see all the time. You know. Yeah. Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you what. I'd like to. I don't. Not that anybody's going to be able to sh- get these off the top of the head, but I get real uh, upset when I hear phrases. Are, uh, you know what I hate? The phrase true freshman. If I, what, I try and understand what a true freshman is. Does, does it really make a difference to somebody if they're red shirted or if they're act, whether they're 18 or 19? It doesn't make any difference. They still have four years of eligibility. If I hear one more guy saying he's a true freshman, I thought, wow, good for him. He's getting to play with the big boys, I guess. I, that just uh, Maybe that doesn't bother anybody, but I hate that phrase when guys yeah. say he's a true freshman. As well, you know, as opposed to what? Yeah, but uh, obviously not bothering anybody else like it bugs me. But uh, anybody got anything else that guys, I, that there's there's little phrases that uh, some of the announcers and stuff, I just like to strangle them because I'm not a true Frenchman guy. But uh, you know, how about you, partner? I'm, I'm throwing something at you without even telling you about it. Anything that uh, particularly gets your goat on some of these things? Not particularly. Not particularly. <laughs> that's fine. That's okay. And now let's talk about what we're thankful for, and and, okay. and sports this year. There you that go. was a great thing to bring up. Uh, you want you start us off? I'm going to start. What are you thankful for? In sports. Yeah. In sports, because I have a lot to be thankful for outside of sports, and so I'm going to we're going to stick this to sports. Okay. Um, I'm I'm thankful that my teams are doing well this year. <laughs> my teams are. The Mets. We had a great season. Great season for the Mets. I'm happy that my Vikings are eight and three. And I mean, I I don't have this happen very often that my teams are halfway decent. I'm even a little happy uh, to a lesser degree that the Knicks are they're eight and ten, but they were supposed to be a lot worse than this. So they're in a lesser degree. Uh, I'm you know happy about that. So I'm happy about that those are happening in sports. So how about you? Well, you know what? I thought about it, and it, it's as trite as it may sound, but I really I think finally I'm glad they came up with some kind of a system to try to get a. And a, a college football champion decided. I don't know if it's a perfect way to do it, yeah. but it, it always bothered me. There were three teams that would be undefeated, and yeah. they'd pick one. I'd say, well, yeah. th- there's not even a playoff in place. Uh, I like the fact that it's improved for sure. I well, think. that's for me. I, yeah. I guess I'm thankful for that because wouldn't it be awful if you had like Alabama, Oklahoma, four teams that are all undefeated? And I, I, I know some of them have to play each other, right. but but I, I just. Uh, so that's what gets me on that. Uh, I, but I like it. Anybody else thankful or anything? Let's hear it. What do you got? I'm thankful that I live in a country where I can come into a place like Margarita Republic and listen to people like you and discuss anything you want to without the fear of going to jail. I love it. All right. I, you know what? I, I think he that's a freedom of speech. I like that. That's... Uh, <laughs> I thought he was going to say, I'm thankful I can get you removed from here anytime I want to. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, well, um, you, yeah, well, listen. All right. Boomer here. Yeah. yeah. Told me when he was playing football, Jimmy Brown was the easiest person to bring down. <laughs> <laughs> Here, you know, we were talking about Jimmy Brown the one day. Can you imagine, he played lacrosse. Can you imagine being a lacrosse player and seeing him running at you? <laughs> well, him and Ron Kramer, <laughs> him and Ron Kramer were all Americans that go to tackle now, trying to take yeah. him down. Can you down? imagine that? Him and Ron Kramer, both that same year, were all American lacrosse players. Now, Ron Kramer, the tight end for the world champion Green Bay Packers, Packers yeah. was six foot seven. 280 pounds. Now, can you imagine playing lacrosse with two guys running down the field with big sticks in their hand? I can't. Well, get, <laughs> I'll tell you I'm what. I'm thankful that, I didn't play in that I'm, game. I'm, you know what? Now, I am thankful that I never played lacrosse, that my you know parents what? never let you me know, play. You know, the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles uh, announcer was was uh, sharing some thankful th- thankfulness the other day. Did you hear that? No. What do you have to say? Oh, yeah. He, during the game... Uh, when they were playing the other day, the Eagles announcer said, uh, "Among the this is his this is a quote from from the announcer. Among the many things that that I'm thankful for this Thanksgiving is that there's only ten and a half minutes left in this game. I, <laughs> I don't have much more. I can't take much more of this. 
can't take much more of this. <laughs> How about not, that? Oh, that's great. You know, I he was like, thankful. I'll tell you what he can't do. He can't put on the 76ers because that's not going to help him either. But like I said, better days are ahead for Philadelphia. But uh, so, you know, I want to thank uh, one of the things I'm thankful for, and I'm taking Boomer still. I'm stealing his uh, place here. I'm thankful for my partner, Bob, for Greg. And I, we appreciate all the guys that come in and participate here. Uh, Margarita Republic has treated us just spectacularly. They have great customers, very knowledgeable sports fans, and we're just glad to be a part of it. Wouldn't you agree, Bob? Absolutely. So with that in mind, we're going to be ready to go next week. But thanks again to everybody. We are wrapping it up. Uh, the coach seems happy with us, and we are going to be back next week with another session of Shots from the Bench here at Margarita Republic in beautiful Spanish Springs. Thank you, everybody. Great job, bro. Thank you, thank you. That's good. You guys don't remember Dante Pastorini. We don't want to remember the old Oilers. Can you imagine watching a team play 14 games and not have to play over 38 yards? Oh, my gosh. Poor fans. How much excitement can you take? I remember the Saints. The Saints. And, and they they weren't and they actually won a couple games. We used to call them the Aints. The Aints. Remember yep. they wear those paper bags they cut off? That's funny. The Aints. <laughs>